If you want to compare two periods with different categories, well then one option would be a normal column chart that shows the values and the difference from one period to the other. But if you really want to emphasize that difference, then maybe a better option would be an arrow chart that shows an arrow from the previous period to the current period. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to set it up, of course, only using native features. Let's get started. Welcome to How to Power BI, my name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Let's get started and see how we can build an error chart, which is a visual that you might want to use if you really want to emphasize the difference from one period to the other. Now, as an example, we're going to use this chart over here as a starting point, which is at the moment a column chart that shows the current sales values for different products. Now, first of all, let's take that chart and turn it into a line chart because I don't want to visualize columns. I just need our data points, which is going to serve as a starting point for the hours that will go up and down. Now, here, I'm still visualizing the total sales. However, as a starting point for these arrows up and down, I need the sales from the previous period. Now, for that, we have over here on the right-hand side two other measures. First of all, we have sales current quarter. Let me open it up, which figures out, okay, what is the current quarter in the filter context? All right, so one quarter year needs to be selected. And then I use that to put a filter using that calculate function. All right, now that's the current quarter sales. Then I also have the previous quarter sales, which just, well, takes the current quarter sales and pushes it one quarter back, using also calculate and the date add function to push the date one quarter to the back. All right, now that we have these two measures, I can go back to our visual, go here to the builds panel, and instead of total sales, I'm going to take over here the sales for the previous Quarter, because those are going to be the data points that serve as a starting point for the arrows up and down. All right, then I won't, don't want to show that line. So let's go here to the formatting options and then here open up the lines group. And I want to set the stroke width to zero because I don't want to see the line that connects the dots. And then we can turn the markers on. Okay, now the data labels for the time being we don't need. So I'm going to Turn those off. Now these data points I want to show in green if the current quarter sales are above the previous quarter sales and in red if we have it the other way around. Now you might think, oh here, under markers we have conditional formatting for the colors, but we don't. All right, so that's disappointing. So we need to think of a workaround. Now one thing that we could do is to create two new measures. One measure that only shows the sales previous quarter when the current quarter sales is above above it, and one measure that shows the sales for previous quarter when the current quarter sales are below it. All right, now let's create these two measures. So first one, this is going to be sales previous quarter and then positive, and then we can say if, and then the current quarter sales, so the current quarter sales is above the previous quarter sales. Only then I want to have the previous quarter sales. All right, now let's copy that whole measure and then insert another one. And then we just have to reverse it. So I paste it in over here. Positive will be now negative. And over here, I don't want to have a bigger than sign, but a smaller than sign. Now, what's the point? Well, now we can, instead of having here sales previous quarter, we take sales previous quarter, negative and positive. All right, now that gives us all of the data points again. However, now you see we have a different color there for the positive ones and the negative ones because, well, we don't have that conditional formatting option, right? So what we can do next is go here back to the marker colors. Now select the series for the negative ones. Now there I want to have the color red. Well, let's pick it over here. And for the other one, for the positive ones, I want to have the color Green. Okay, now, and you see, now we have kind of conditional formatting without needing that conditional formatting button over there. So it's a little workaround. Okay, now these values are going to serve as a starting point for the arrows up and down. 
Now to get the arrows that go up and down, we need arrow bars. So let's go to the formatting options and then scroll all the way down to the arrow bars group. And here we have the two series sales, brief score, the positive and negative. Now let's start with the positive arrows that go up and then open the options, enable them. And here we can put in an upper bound or lower bound. Now here we need the upper bound because the previous quarter, that's going to serve as a starting point. And then we want to have arrows that go up. Now, where should it stop? With the current quarter value for the sales. However, I don't just want to take over here the total sales. That will not work because that will also put in the arrows over here where they need to go down. All right, so I need to have two more measures that will be very similar to these two over here. So I take one of them, just copy them again, then add a new measure. Let's paste it in here. And here we have sales current quarter and then positive. If the sales current quarter is bigger than the previous one, then I want to have the sales current quarter. All right, now then again, copy this and then also create one for sales current quarter negative. So new measure, paste it in there, then positive becomes negative, then over here reverse the sign and that's it. Now we're ready to go back to our arrow bars. So here we are in the formatting options, arrow bars, and now we can put in that upper bound and the upper bound is going to be determined by sales current quarter positive. And you see we have the arrows that go up. Now, it doesn't look completely right just yet. However, that is just formatting. Let's now move on to the bars. Choose the bar color, which is going to be green. And then here, the marker that we want to have is that arrow. Okay, now here you can play around with this size if you want it to be bigger or smaller. I think it's fine for now. And then we can also over here get rid of that border. It's a white border, so you don't see that well. So I just put it to zero. All right, and now we just have to repeat the same thing for the negative bars. So let's switch the series, go to options. Now we don't want to have an upper bound, but a lower bound. And here we can just use the measure that we already did before, sales current quarter negative. All right, that looks good. Now we just have to update the formatting again. Now here we can choose the bar color, it's red. Then set the border size to zero. Marker shape is also going to be an arrow. Okay, and that already gives us the arrows that go up and down. So the main thing is already there. Now, the next thing that we have to talk about is the labels. Now, one option would be to put the labels in using arrow labels. All right, so let's give this a try. So let's turn them on. And you see over here, we have the labels for the absolute values. But even that we could change, right? So if you go here and open up the arrow labels options. There we can, first of all, let's make it a little bit smaller. And then over here, the label format, we can change to, for example, relative numeric, so that you have the change or the relative percentage change, okay? And even better, you can also show a background. And that background color, we could, well, give a matching color, maybe play around with the transparency. I think it's a little bit annoying that we have two decimal places and cannot change that. So I'm just gonna change it back to absolute values. So that shows the change. And for the positive ones, I'm going to do exactly the same. So let's switch over here to the other series for the positive arrows. Then go over here to our labels again, turn them on. And over here, I can then also make those a little bit smaller, give them also a background and make that background color the same color green and increase the transparency a bit. All right, now that already starts to look pretty good. However, let's see if we can still do better. Now at the moment we are showing here for the red labels, the change. However, for the green ones, totally forgot to update the arrow labels so that it also shows the change. So relative numeric, okay? Now this is probably only a good idea if you would also show, well, the ending points, the absolute values, not the, just the change, all right? Now, so therefore, it's probably a good idea to also turn the y-axis on, all right? So that we know where it ended. Now, this would be one option. However, what we could also consider is to, well, just leave the absolute values in, and then 
maybe you have another label there for the data points but the percentage change okay so for that we wouldn't need the y-axis so let me go back to the arrow bars and then over here we can go and let's start with the negative arrows here i change this back to absolute values so i scroll all the way down and say that this needs to be absolute and then do exactly the same for the other ones as well so over here positive and then change this also to absolute Okay, so we see at the moment the values of the current quarter, but we don't really have a number for the change. Now to get that value in, what we could do is put labels there at the starting points, all right? Now, so that means we need another measure again. So I'm gonna go over here to my data panel and I have over here already a measure set up where we take the sales of the current quarter divided by the previous quarter minus one. That gives us the growth rate and then here in that format function, I can say how it should be formatted. All right, now that's also the measure for that bar chart that you saw at the beginning, okay? Now I'm going to reuse that. So I take the visual, then we can go to data labels. Let's turn it on. And then for all of them, I want the font size to be a little bit smaller. So eight is the smallest, okay? And then we can customize the labels for the negative ones and the positive ones. Now, at the moment, it shows the absolute values, but I want to have the change, the percentage change. So let's start with the negative ones, go over here to values, scroll down, and there we can go for a custom label. Add the data and choose our growth percentage measure that we want to show for the label. Okay, perfect, there you go. Now I want them um, to be in the color red, all right? If you want to emphasize a little bit further, if you think it's a little bit too much, then maybe leave them as they were, all right? And then you could also go for a background. Okay, so turn the background on. And then over here, have a matching color, red. Play around with the transparency, for example, 95%. I think both are maybe a little bit much. So let's turn it off again. And maybe instead of having these arrows in there, let's go back to that measure. So over here, that sales growth percentage, quarter per quarter label. And then instead of that arrow up, I want to have just a plus icon and over here just a minus icon all right maybe that looks a little bit cleaner all right that's better not so overwhelming okay now for the positive ones i'm going to do exactly the same take the chart go to the formatting options then over here for data labels we choose the series sales previews quarter positive then custom label we turn on add the data and then over here we take that same measure as before now here, another thing that I didn't do before is the positioning. Maybe if we just make sure that the positive ones are always below the starting points. So here on the options, set the position to under. And for the negative ones, we probably always want to have that label above it. So position above. And there you go. Here we have our first version of an arrow chart. Now, of course, we can fine tune it a little bit. However, I think it's pretty good. Now, another thing that I would consider doing is to instead of having that percentage there at the beginning, maybe we want to place it next to the line. So somewhere in the middle. Now, the problem is how do we get it there? Because, well, there is an option to play with the minimum label offset. Now, if I do that, let's see what happens. Well, over here, it goes up and down. Okay, but hmm, still not possible to get it nicely always in the middle. And another thing that is kind of problematic is how can we push it a little bit to the right okay now let's see how we can achieve that with a little trick okay now to get it always in the middle we probably just need a series that returns the data points for well the, that are in the middle between the current period sales and the previous period sales so again another measure so let's add over here a new one and let's call this one sales middle and then over here we just want to have well the sum of the uh, previous quarter and the current quarter all right so let's go and look for a measure sales current quarter plus the sales of the previous quarter let's add that between brackets and then divide it by two now we still need an opening bracket there at the beginning all right then i'm going to add the sales middle to our visualization okay now you see we have now these dots always exactly in the middle of our arrow bars. Now let's then do the next thing, which is the formatting. 
right? So we go here to format, then the markers for that series I don't want to show. So I turn sales middle markers off. And then we just need to start playing around with the labels again. Now, the labels for the, well, the starting points we now want to get rid of, right? So we have to go here to sales, brief score negative, and then turn the labels off. Okay, we do the same thing for the positive ones. And now we take the middle ones. And there, those we want to have in the middle. All right, now here, let's also make sure that the values are as small as possible. Okay, that's fine. And then we want to, well, have a custom label. So let's turn the custom label on, go to add data, match mix, and then over here, take that same label percentage as what we had before. Okay, now it nicely shows more or less in the middle. Well, more or less, not exact. Now to get a little bit more exact, we probably have to put that offset a little bit more to zero. Okay, that's a little bit better. Now, if you're still not happy, of course, you can also play around with that value itself instead of dividing it by two, maybe choose a different number like 2.1 or 1.9 and try to adjust where the placement is of the labels. Okay, now, now that we have it more or less than in the middle, we want to take a percentage and push it a little bit more to the right. So I'm gonna go back to that measure. And here, I just want to add a little bit of padding to the left of that number. Okay, so I create another variable, padding left. And over here, let's try this first. So let's say we have five spaces. Now, padding left, I'm going to add as a part over here on the left hand side of that percentage. All right, and let's see what happens. Well, unfortunately, nothing happens. So let's go back again. And here we need to have a different character that doesn't get removed by Power BI. Now, one of these characters is an empty character that you can get from anticharacter.com. All right, so I'm just going to copy that from here, then go back to Power BI, paste it in there, and this is what you get. All right, now that we have this, let's then do this inside of a repetition function. And there we can say how many times do we want to repeat that empty character. For example, 20 times. Now, let's try this. And you see, this one does push the percentage to the right. So that's much better. Now the question is just how many times do we need to repeat that character? Let's try five. That is a little bit too little. So I have to increase it maybe to 10. And you see, it's already a little bit better, but not perfect. So probably 15. That's the sweet spot. It depends a little bit on how wide your visualization is. All right, and now we have our labels to the right hand side of the arrow bars. Perfect. Now, maybe you want to emphasize it just a little bit more, which we could do by making it bold. And so here for the data labels, let's make them bold. Okay, now another thing that we might want to do is, well, sort it in a certain order. Now, the thing is though, we have now here only sales, previous quarter negative, previous quarter positive and middle. Let's say I want to sort by the previous quarter. Then this is not going to help us because if we go here to sort options, you see we only have these two. So if you want to have a sort order by all of the values from the previous quarter or the current quarter, then you go here and add those to the tooltips. So if I go here, sales, current quarter, now you will see that shows up over here in the sort options. You can take it and sort it in either descending or ascending order. Now, there you go. We have everything in place for our arrow chart. Now, the last thing is just, we need to refine it a bit with the spacing because now at the moment, sometimes it just looks a little bit cramped. Now, this would not be the case if I make it a little bit wider, that would be an easy fix, all right? And then we just have to play around with the spacing of the labels, etc. But that's it, here we have our arrow charts. Now, I hope that you like it and let's try it out one last time. So over here, let's choose a different quarter. Perfect, nice. Okay, now let me know your thoughts, your comments in the comment section below. Now, if you like all of this design stuff and visualization tricks, then make sure to check out these two videos over here. And if you wanna build reports together with me from beginning to end, then make sure to have a look at this upcoming training. Now, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.